Welcome to a lesson on the test of independence using a chi-square distribution. Tests of independence involve using a contingency table of observed values or data. The test statistic for a test of independence is similar to that of a goodness of fit test. The test statistic is chi-square, which is equal to the sum of the square of O minus E divided by E, but notice now there are I times J terms in the sum, where O is equal to the observed values, E is equal to the expected values, I is equal to the number of rows in the table, and J is equal to the number of columns in the table, which gives us I times J terms in the sum to determine chi-square. A test of independence determines whether two factors are independent or not. If they are not independent, they are dependent. Recall two events A and B are independent if the knowledge that one occurred does not affect the chance the other occurs. For example, the outcome of two rolls of a fair die are independent events. The outcome of the first roll does not change the probability for the outcome of the second roll. In performing a test of independence, the null hypothesis states that the two categorical variables are not related in the population, or they are independent, and the alternative hypothesis states that the two categorical variables are related in the population, or are dependent. Let's take a look at an example. In a volunteer group, adults 21 and older volunteer from one to nine hours each week to spend time with a disabled senior citizen. The program recruits among community college students, four-year college students, and non-students. Below is a table of adult volunteers and the number of hours they volunteered per week. Is the number of hours volunteered independent of the type of volunteer test at a 5% significance level? So because we are testing at a 5% significance level, we know alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And now looking at the table, notice how the rows indicate the type of volunteer, the columns indicate how many hours per week. And because the question is, is the number of hours volunteered independent of the type of volunteer, the null hypothesis is the number of hours volunteered is independent of the type of volunteer, meaning they are not related. And the alternative hypothesis is the number of hours volunteered is dependent on the type of volunteer, which means the two variables are related. So the given table gives us the observed values. Our first step is to find the expected values from the observed values. The calculation for the expected frequency is the row total times the column total divided by the total number surveyed. So for example, if we want to find the expected value for the community college students who volunteer one to three hours, we need to multiply the total from row one and column one and then divide by 839. We'll notice how the row total for row one is 255 and the column total is 298, and the total surveyed is 839. So if we go to the calculator, notice how 255 times 298 divided by 839 is 90.57. To find the expected value for community college students volunteering four to six hours, we multiply the total from row one and column two and divide by the total surveyed, which gives us 255 times 379 divided by 839, which we can see here in the calculator is approximately 115.19. So notice how I've shown five of the calculations here. You may want to pause the video just to verify they are correct. The next step is to enter the observed values and expected values into the T84 as matrices. And we don't include the row and column totals and therefore both will be three by three matrices. Here we have the observed values, and here we have the expected values. We will enter the observed values in matrix A, and the expected values in matrix B. And I've already done this to save time. To enter matrices, we press second, x to the power of negative one for the matrix menu, arrow to edit, Select matrix A by pressing enter. Enter the dimensions, which they both are three by three, so we enter three, enter, three, enter. Then enter the observed values, which I've already done. To enter the expected values in matrix B, again we press the second, x to the power of negative one for the matrix menu, arrow right to edit, down to two for matrix B, press enter, enter the dimensions, and then enter the expected values, which again I've already done. 
From here, let's go back to the main. From here, let's go back to the home screen by pressing second mode for quit. And now going back to our problem, the distribution for the test is a chi-square distribution. To find the degrees of freedom, we find the product of the number of columns minus one and the number of rows minus one. We have three rows and three columns, and therefore the degrees of freedom are equal to two times two, which is equal to four. The next step is to calculate the test statistic, which is chi-square, as well as the p-value using the TID4. So going back to the calculator, we press stat, right arrow to tests. We need to arrow up or down, I'm going to arrow up, and select option C for chi-square test, which is this option here. Press enter. We have the observed values in matrix A, the expected values in matrix B, which are correct. If these matrices were not correct, for example, if this was not matrix A, we would have to press second, x to the power of negative one for the matrix menu, select matrix A by pressing enter, arrow down to expected, select matrix B by again pressing second, x to the power of negative one, arrowing down to matrix B, and then press enter. Now we arrow down to calculate and press enter. Chi-square is approximately 12.99, and the p-value is approximately 0.0113. Let's go ahead and record this information. So again, we now know chi-square is approximately 12.99, and the p-value is approximately 0.0113. We also know the p-value is equal to the probability that chi-square is greater than or equal to 12.99. And now we compare alpha and the p-value to determine whether we do not reject the null hypothesis or whether we reject the null hypothesis. We'll notice how the p-value is low compared to alpha. When the p-value is low, the null must go, or more formally, because the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, or because alpha is greater than or equal to the p-value, we reject the null hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis is the number of hours volunteered is independent of the type of volunteer. We are rejecting this, and therefore our final conclusion is, at a 5% level of significance from the data, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the number of hours volunteered and the type of volunteer are dependent on one another. I hope you found this helpful.